The Imperio Playing Cards by Nedigma Playing Cards. This is a Mayan themed deck, a little bit of Aztec, uh, has a really cool vibe to it and I really can't wait to show you guys. So thank you to Nedigma Playing Cards for sending me this deck. You can check them out down in the description if you want to pick some up for yourself. Now you're not here for me talking, you're here because you want to see the cards. So let's get into this review right now. Alrighty, so we have the Imperio Playing Cards. Now, I'm only going to review one of these. I'm going to keep this one right here sealed, so eventually I might do a giveaway with it or just keep it for myself. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this one, so um, if you think I should give this one away or what you think I should do with it, um, let me know, and maybe I will give it away. Who knows? So let's get rid of this, and let's drop into that deck. So first we need to take off this cellophane. There we are. Cellophane comes off really nicely. And for those of you people who keep the cellophane on, protect it. Um, I'm not that guy. So, we don't got to worry about that. So let's look at the tuck box first. So at the front of the tuck box, you will see that it says Imperio by Denigma. Um, you'll have some really cool um, designs, design work done. Uh, I really love how... Um, it looks like he's blowing this like air out of out of this side, and you have like a really cool dragon on the bottom. You can definitely tell it has some Mayan, Aztec, um, Indian tribal type themes going on through this deck, and it really does look amazing. Um, it's done in a black glossy stock, um, so you can clearly see the gloss in that right there. That's not really much of a surprise. And then it's like a yellowish tan like a muted yellow type of color for everything else. Uh, you'll also notice when it says Denigma that it's all bold here, all caps, and you'll see that it has a couple of arrowheads on the outsides. And as far as I can see, that is all you can tell from the front of the tuck box. I'm assuming this is going to be the back and the reason why I say assuming is because all of my deck reviews are always just first look deck reviews. I take them out of the box and I show you what I see firsthand. That way you guys can see what you guys will be getting firsthand. So I'm assuming this will be something alongside of the back design. And again, it has the Fold Enigma logo at the bottom. And we'll get into the tuck seal in a second. On the side, we have something that looks a lot like what it would be for a uh, totem pole with a bunch of the different types of sculptures or heads um, which are all really cool looking and the same ones on the other side. The bottom just has some ad copy period deck by Enigma, designed by I'm not going to even try to pronounce that you guys get the different you guys get the idea and it is USPCC so clearly this deck is going to feel great when you get it it has the Instagram handle, so I'll leave the Instagram handle down in the description so you guys can check them out. And if you guys do use this deck, use hashtag Imperio deck just because, you know what, why not? It has it on the has it on the tuck, so let's go for it. Um, you also guys should know that um, how I feel about tuck seals. I'm not a tuck seal guy. I think it fits this deck well, but that's not me. So I will not be keeping the tuck seal. So for those of you who do, sorry for your luck. That's not me. Um, but what you will see is a really cool Ace of Spades with an eye in the middle. And I'm assuming that this will be the Ace of Spades for the deck. Um, but it's done in complete black and it has two different colorways. It has this really like a, like a brownish, like between brown and tan, and then a white. So I'm going to take this off because I am not a guy who cares for seals. It just... And I'm not referring to the animal. And eventually I will clean all of that off. But for now, I want to get into the review. So I can worry about that later. So I'll leave this off to the side. On the top of the tuck, you will see it says The Luxury. The... I thought that said Luxury. L-U something U-A-Y playing cards. Luckway? What on earth? If you Lahue, I think that's an H. If you guys know what L U H U A Y means, 
let me know if that's an Aztec word or some Mayan word or something like that. Um, let me know what Lahue means if you guys know, because honestly, I don't. All right, let's get into the inside of the tuck seal. So where the tuck flap is, you kind of have that same uh, spade pip as what you had on the seal. And it does continue into the same outside border design uh, you'll have on the inside flaps, but then nothing on the inside of the tuck box. Left completely blank. And then that is all I can say about this. So I'm going to get that, make sure there's nothing else on the inside. Everything's completely white. So I can set this off to the side and let's get into how the rest of this looks. So let's go at the back design first. So you can see that I was right uh, predicting the back design, which was also the back of the tuck box, except for it also has this really cool border. Um, I hope you guys can see this really well, but it is intricately detailed, far more than I would have expected because Although everything was more bold blocks used on the tuck, um, the intricate detail in artwork on this is kind of insane. I'm not gonna lie. So it's done and still in a white cardstock, which I'm really glad that they went with that. They could have went with a black, um, but most of the time black chips away at the edges, and that never ends up looking good. So going on a white cardstock, having that border, I wish that the border would have been a little bit thinner. Um, that's just my preference. Um, I do think it looks good, but personally, I would have preferred a little bit of a thinner border. Um, but still, you have this gold and tan um, alternating colors. So some of it's darker, some of it's lighter. It does make it look a little bit more rustic. And you have that solid black and a very, very white, clean white as the border. How about a medium? No, it's not a thick border. It's a medium to thin, but I'd prefer it a little bit thinner. And as far as I can tell, unless you guys can see something that I cannot see, um, it is a two-way design, so when you t flip it over, it stays the same. And because it is a circle back, cardistry will look fantastic with this deck, And but I will get into all of that in a second. So before we get into that, let's look at what the faces of these cards look like. So first we have the Jokers. So we have semi-duplicate jokers, just different colors, which can work well for color changes and magic. Um, so you have, looks almost like a crab, but has a human's face. So if you ever went to Chipotle before they ended up taking these things down, they had artwork a lot like this uh, on their walls. So if you remember that, um, you're, you're a goat, because those things were cool. Um, but they are completely identical, excluding the fact that they are different colors. And then it has, says Joker at the top, and clearly they are one way. Then you have that Ace of Spades, which looks, honestly, really cool. And it's not just a solid line across the outside. You'll notice that it has, like, it comes here, and then it comes out, and then goes back in. And same here. You'll have these little notches where it's not quite lined up, and it does make it look a lot more Aztec and rustic. In just a minor detail, you'll see that the actual letters are custom. They are custom font. And another really minute detail is there's a small gold outline on the indices, which is really cool. All right, now for the number cards for spades, um, they have a white, um, they have a border on the outside. So that's really cool. And then one of them is gold. So always the top one it's looking like. Ooh. Well, let's do that. So two, we have one gold. Three, we have one gold. Four, we have two gold. I'm assuming they're doing this. I would have assumed because that way they could keep it uh, orientation-wise. So now you can keep this orientated so you know which way this goes. And I thought they were going to keep that. But now four, you just don't know. So reasoning behind which one stayed, I'm not quite sure. Um, but besides that, placement is all the same. And excluding the two and three, all of them have two gold pips. So for our court cards in the spades, we have a some type of 
um, Indian or something with a panther or cheetah as a uh, helmet. have feathers coming out the back, and I really do like, which I've never seen before. Um, I do think I still prefer the normal, but I do, I do like the creativity in this, how you have the actual big pips on these corners. Most of the time you'll see it on this corner here, right next to the indice. And these two, but this time it's on this side. So I wonder what that's going to look like uh, when you fan it the other way. And then for the queen, you have um, a woman with a peacock as the helmet and really long hair. And then for the king, probably some, um, probably one of the leaders. It does have like a king tut looking thing. If you guys know what those are called, let me know because I've always wondered. Like it always just comes down from the chin and it resembles royalty. But I don't know what those things are called. Uh, it does have some really cool feathers. And once again, all of them have the outline um, around that. Now, this is one of my favorite things that card companies do. When you do not do this, it makes it look weird. Please, for all companies watching this, if you're thinking about producing a deck, do this. Please. Don't make the other aces boring. If you're going to have a big ace of spades... Clearly make it the mo like the best one, but the rest of them should also be cool. So I like it how it's enlarged, and instead of being like your normal gold color, in that like gold tan that's on the Joker's in the back design, it also has this little bit of a burgundy. Um, and this these two colorways together remind me of a lot of the um, it'd be the Minnesota Golden Gophers. So um, their colors, which is the same here. And it is a one-way design for a diamond, which is really cool, which you never see on the Ace of Diamonds. Because you have three on this side, and you have this little symbol on that side. You never see a one-way Ace of Diamonds. That is so cool. I don't know if I've actually ever seen one. I think this is the first Ace of Diamonds I've ever seen that is one way. That's awesome. You have, of course, Bert, your regular uh, reg reddish burgundy, and you have same placement everything from the spades. And you're going to have the same exact um, quartz from the spades, except for just recolored on really all of them. So I do wish that would have been changed so for everyone um, that they would have had each, like the kings would have each been different and the queens would have been different. I wish that could have been changed. Um, but all in all, it will make it fun for color changes that, It'll look everything else is the same, except for some colors change, which makes a lot of sense. Um, I do wish that they could have had a little bit of the clothes instead of just the head as well. Again, I've never seen that before, but at the same time, I do think that you could have added, uh, did anybody could have added a little bit of the clothes in between. That way, it really could have added some of the culture into the clothes as well, and not just the headgear. So then we have the clubs, and then we have the ace of clubs, which really does look pretty close to the ace of spades. So they do look really close, but this one does uh, stay as a one away, obviously. But from one side to the other, they are symmetrical. Not much I can say about it. And then I do wish they found some way to um, go with the king with a headache and pay homage to that. Um, clearly didn't, and that's fine. Not everyone needs to. And then we have the rest of the hearts, and they are a little bit reshaped, just like everything else is slightly reshaped. And then you have the ace of hearts, and it is, once again, symmetrical on both sides. Now we have, as our extra two cards, because we already have two here, and then we have our other cards. We have a double backer, which is great for magic. And then we have an ad card saying, thank you for bringing magic to life. And a bunch of shout-outs to a bunch of people in the Denigma team. And a couple, a little bit of ad copy at the bottom. And that is all for what the cards look like. You also want to know how they feel, how they handle, etc., etc. Who should buy them, why you would buy them. And I'll get into that right now. So first, how, what they look like when fanned. Um, because it is such a thick border... It does make it a little bit hard to see the real beauty of it, 
because I would love to see. I'm going to make this a little bit of a lopsided, but I'm just going to fan that half. Where you can see this line here on that border, I wish you could see that going all the way around. So if it was a little bit thinner, you'd be able to see that all the way around, and I think that would be really cool. You can still see it partially, and I think especially like on one-handed fans, um, you'll definitely be able to see it. See, that's what I wish I could see on a full fan, which would be nice, um, but that is what it is. So fanning still does look good. Packet cuts are going to look fantastic because of the medium border, so that's not really something you really need to worry about here when doing anything like this. Okay, just for Cure Gomes, if you guys don't know who he is, he also does deck reviews, but we all know how this sounds. If you don't like how this sounds, you're clearly not a magician, so listen to this. That's the dribble test. We all know how this works. So it is a little bit soft. Um, usually the when I hear a dribble, it's a little bit more snappy than that. More like that. Um, I usually like it. So I wish that that would have been on this side, so I can definitely tell that's a little bit of a thinner stock. Uh, it is USB-CC, so it's classic. Um, it's definitely not a B stock, and USB-CC only has two stocks. So you have two stocks, two finishes. It's just classic stock and air cushion finish as far as I can tell. Um, I never saw anything about linen finish, and it's definitely not B stock. So springs, as you can tell, look really good. Uh, let's see, cardistry. I'm going to let you judge for yourself, but personally, I think it look really good. I'm going to do that spring one more time. So what's great about this spring is that you can still see that black coming off the top and bottom corners. So you can still really see the back design even when springing, which is an awesome way to do that. Definitely much easier to spring from that way, and you do get some of both you still get the indices because it is pretty close to that outside. And then we can go this way as well so you guys can see that for blank fans and doing magic tricks like that, that will all work. So cardistry wise from face up, I'm just going to do that same move again. This is called theory. I have taught this on the channel. Um, so theory is definitely a good move for this deck. Honestly, this deck does work really well for cardistry. So who is going to want this deck? Oh, actually, wait. We need to see if it pharaohs. Actually, that's really ironic. It kind of looks like an Egyptian-themed deck. So pharaohing from top to bottom, literally every other. So that honestly couldn't have been better. You're welcome. That's what happens when you've been a magician for way too long. Okay. So from top to bottom... Works fantastic. Giant fan does look really well. Really well. Looks really good. Almost check from bottom to top because some decks only pharaoh one way well and the other way is garbage. And this way, pharaohs both ways. So that is always a good sign. Cascade looks good. So should you buy this depending on who you are? Well, it depends on who you are. So let me tell you all about the four different people who could buy this deck. You have collectors, magicians, cardists, and people who just play games. So here's what I would say. Um, if you are a collector, this is definitely a deck I would collect. Um, it has a different type of style than most decks do. It's from a company that isn't extremely well known, which always makes collecting decks fun because it is always a conversation piece. Having an Aztec, Mayan, Indian type theme deck is not something that comes out very often. So the fact that you would have one is definitely one that I would say collectors should buy. Um, just a little bit of a downfall for collectors though. I do wish that some of it would have been embossed or foil stamped on a tuck. I really think that that would have really made this deck um, a little bit more... I think it would have fit the theme a little bit better. But besides that, uh, I think that the tuck really went well. But I think that a little bit of gold leafing and 
embossing would have went a long ways with this deck. Yes, it would have been more expensive, but I think the payoff would have been worth it. So that is it for collectors. Now, magicians. Should magicians get this? The answer is yes. Coming from someone who is a magician, I would definitely practice magic with this deck. Um, not only are the faces easily recognizable, and that was really unlucky, the fact that I got the one double back in the whole deck. But um, So clearly, what on earth? I get the double backer, and what are the odds of that? The double backer and the ad card. Seriously. All right, so you have nine of spades, and then you're trying to do some color change, and then clearly you can tell it's nine of spades and six of club, six of diamonds. Goodness, it's not that you can't see it, it's that I can't speak. So clearly, color changes work well. Faces are all, all really recognizable. It's not like you're going to have to do much digging to figure it out on what it is. So magicians should be able to use this deck extremely well, and it's not like someone's going to say, well, I think that's a, tr a trick deck because some cardistry decks, most cardistry decks look like they're going to be some type of trick deck, but when it's this intricate, it looks like magic would work extremely well for a deck like this. So magic should work for any magician using the Imperial playing cards. Um, Cardis, um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about Cardists. Um, I do practice some cardistry, but at the end of the day, I am not a cardist. I've been doing it for um, cardistry probably only a couple of years, maybe three. Um, cardistry definitely isn't as much of my thing. But at the end of the day, it does have more of a circle back type design, although it's not completely circle back. Um, but it does make things like that parallel would look great, spinning any cards, doing... Um, Ernay's go round or anything like that, judo flip, all those moves would look great with this, and because of the uh, medium border, packet cuts are also going to look really good. I do wish a little bit would have broken the border, just because fanning would have been a little bit nicer, but at the end of the day, I think cardistry will look really, really good. And then for gameplay, uh, the only thing I would hesitate on is the fact that most people don't respect cards like whoever you are. So you're probably going to respect the cards a lot more than everyone else. And if you don't want people to um, bend your cards, this probably isn't the deck. But if you have people who actually respect your cards, know about you and how much you love them, then I think this deck would work great because the faces are easily recognizable. So that is all I can say about this. So once again, thank you to the name of Playing Cards for sending me this deck. You can check them out down in the description if you want to pick up your own deck. I'm about to go cry now. So, on that really depressing note, this is Card Perfect, signing off.